Yeah, you know what it is. Sanyika Shakur. That's right. Broadcasting to you live from a new African population district, Southern California. You know, uh, seems that my last broadcast offended some people. If you find yourself offended, you're supposed to be offended because you're on the wrong side of this. Check this out. Shout out to Celeste. I see you, sister. I ain't forgot you. I recognize you. I appreciate you. We all do. You did some wonderful stuff. You're doing some wonderful things. Shout out to Wes. Shout out to Tiny Diamond and his wife, Salam. Good people. My people. My bloodline. Good people. Shout out to G from Florida. That's right, homie. I see you. Shout out to Pac-Man from Florida. That's right. Rocky, I see you. All the homies out there. Ace Low, North Carolina. Raleigh. Doing it. Shout out to uh, Takuma Shakur. Shout out to all the people that I didn't shout out before. I didn't intentionally miss you. I got you. Check this out. I'm going to tell y'all a little bit about myself. So y'all won't have to go on the internet and find out. Things like that, you know? Because usually those things are, uh, will misinform you. I'm going to tell you straight from the horse's mouth. First of all, if you want to know about this Kiwi thing, and Kiwi is Swahili for Crip. Actually, the word is Kiwi thing. And Kiwi thing means Crip. And so what we did was we took Kiwi thing and we took tail off. And we just said Crip. Kiwi. Like Damu say Damu, which is blood of Swahili. Barigami Damus. Seek Lee's out. Check this out. You know, I grew up in South Central Los Angeles, man. I joined my set, the A Trey Gangsters in 75. I uh I got criminalized in fact and by by that. I wasn't a criminal before that. Every criminal act I've committed has been in commission in one way or another, uh, for the set and for the destruction of our enemies, who we perceived as our enemies at that time. And uh, enemies come in various fashions, various forms, various degrees. And so uh, when you function in a particular realm, you know, it's easy for you to be misled as to who your enemies are. Your enemy is whoever's doing you the worst harm, whether it's an abuser at home, whether it's the teacher at school, whether it's a pig in the street, or whether it's the dude down the street, you know. So, uh, Franz Fanon taught us that, and that's the brother that wrote Wretched of the Earth. He taught us that uh, in colonial situations, colonial people who have colonial mentalities find their greatest form of resistance against their own. And that's just part of the criminal mentality and the colonial mentality. And that's what we fell into in the set in South Central. Uh, my years as a youth were spent in uh, various forms of uh, lockdown from Juvenile Hall to camp to youth authority, and eventually prison. And then it didn't stop in prison, then they put me in the hole. And so every prison I've been in, every juvenile hall, every camp, every YA I've been in, I've been in solitary confinement. I spent probably over 30 years collectively in solitary confinement in one form or another. That has had a devastating impact on my mind. You know, and uh, it's taken arduous struggle and study to cleanse myself of that. And um, even today I find myself with um, symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder um, and things like that. However, I've dedicated myself to the struggle for independence, for freedom and socialism for our people since we've been held in a system of capitalism. In fact, it was our enslavement and colonialism that allowed the system of feudalism to be transformed from that into mercantile capitalism and eventually into monopoly capitalism. So why would we then want to be a part of the system that was made on our backs? Who will we then exploit? And see, that's what we got to understand. You know, I see, I, I go on the internet sometimes, I see a lot of little homies on their, you know, they trying to figure it out too. They trying to understand. People is moving, man. And people is trying to figure out where do we stand? What is our relation uh, in this whole cauldron of struggle? Now, we have to understand this. The system of capitalism is not just an economic order. It's a culture. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog feeding frenzy on what can I get? What can I take? 
who can I capitalize on? Whose labor can I capitalize on to make a profit? And that's what capitalism is, capitalizing on someone else's labor exploitation. It also uh, generates various other forms of exploitation, uh, sexism. Uh, it didn't start patriarchy, which is the man is the head and the, the woman comes from his rear. It didn't start that, but it linked into that and now promotes that. And so various other isms flow from that particular thing. And so uh, there's a piece I wrote recently called uh, Pathology of Patriarchy, which can be found at uh, www.kersplebedeb.com slash Sanika Shakur. And the actual piece is called Pathology of Patriarchy. And the subtitle is Search for Clues at the Scene of the Crime. One thing we're going to have to do is, of course, fight our way out of this. But before we can fight, we have to understand the fight. The fight is not just physical. It's a mental thing. We have to realize that there's no chains on us right now. And yet we're more enslaved today than we were in 1680, 1750. 1820. Why is that? Why do we still continuously go along with the program when obviously the program has been designed to keep us powerless and keep those uh, in the ruling class in power? How do we not get their power, but how do we break their power? That's the struggle. And so I would like to get up in the morning and reach in my pocket and pull out a piece of currency that has Malcolm's face on it or has Asata's face on it or has Denmark Vesey's face on it or General Harriet Tubman's face on it. I'd like to turn on my television and see the president of the Republic of New Africa speaking about our international interest. I'd like to look at an Iraqi person and explain to them, although I live in America, my nation is not at war with your nation. My nation has not been offended by things that they said you've done to America. That's not our war. The Afghani people, we got no beef with. While we don't condone terrorism, if there is such thing, and terrorism is a two-sided thing. If America's calling somebody a terrorist, that's because they've terrorized somebody. When America puts on the books kidnapping, that means that they've kidnapped somebody. How do you think you as an African, you as uh, uh, an Asian, or if you haven't immigrated here, how do you think you got here? By kidnapping. Every law on their books are laws in which they've integrated into their system by things that they first done to people. Overstand that. What they've done is they've ran up the ladder, created every crime on every rung of that ladder, got to the roof, set the ladder on fire, and then says any act that you commit trying to reach this roof is a crime because they don't want us to be in a position of power. And power is what? Power is being in control of your destiny. Freedom is being in control of your resources and your destiny. So once you understand that us as a people are a nation within this empire alone and by ourselves, that we can't rely on the federal government to legislate our freedom into existence. The Civil Rights Act don't mean nothing because you're not a citizen. And this situation is not civil. Civil means peaceful. And there ain't been no peace since 1619 and hundreds of years before that when they invaded us. Let me explain this. Me, I'm a new African. 
And why do I say New African? Because when they captured us on the continent, I may have been Igbo, I may have been Iwe, I may have been Fa, Ga, Fulani, Wolof, Ashanti, Yoruba. I was myself. But as a consequence of them putting us all together up and down the west coast of Africa and transporting us to America with the residue that we had as ourselves, as a people, we combined and became a new African nation in North America. Not American because the Americans were a new European nation. Triple on that. Check that out. The French, the English, the German, the Dutch, they all combined themselves to become a new European nation and they named themselves Americans. That was their human right. Our human right is having the ability to name ourselves, to govern ourselves, to do for ourselves. And on the smallest level, that's what street organization activity is about. But in a lopsided, unconscious way, trip on that. Because street organizations want what in the hood? We want at least one supermarket where we can, our people can shop. We want a park where we can kick it, mile up, meet up, kick it, meetings, picnics. We want at least a junior high school and a high school from which we can draw recruits. We want uh, weapons to defend ourselves and smash our enemies. That's an army. We want sisters who can take care of the children, although that's sexist because men could take care of children as well. But if you understand organization, development, struggle, and revolution, you'll see that banging is but a small microcosm of what we need as a people and this is why we cling so much to bangers because we know that if the bangers already have the idea that fuck america and fuck the laws that we can further develop them into revolutionaries that not just say fuck the law but let's build our own nationalism Revolutionary nationalism, not reactionary nationalism, because rock bottom, Rumsfeld, Cheney, Bush, they're nationalists, but they're reactionary nationalists. We don't want to be nationalists like them. We don't want to have a nation for nation's sake. We want to be a revolutionary nation. We want to continuously grow and develop our resources for the betterment of not just our people, but people, period. And not no bourgeois democracy. Now, I'm not gonna go on too long about this and this will be part one of part two. But I'm trying to get people to understand that you can't be 50 years old, 45 years old, still standing on the corner doing the same thing that you did when you was 15. You can't do it. If your gang has not developed into a national organization by the time you're 50, you need to do something else. And so at 23, I understood that, which is why I started cleansing my criminal mentality and getting with consciousness, understanding that my heart and my resources of self could better serve us as a whole as opposed to us individually as a set. Not to denigrate or take nothing from the set. The set is what gave me courage. The set gave me discipline. The set taught me understanding of rank and order, now which we call hierarchy. Those things came as a consequence. The set taught me how to shoot, period. I mean, come on. Yeah, I was shooting at other sisters and brothers, but it taught me how to shoot. Now, as karma has come around, I got to go back and make amends. And that's what we need to do. I, I know I'm all over the place here and I ain't got but a couple seconds. But listen, this is part one of part two. Part one of the two point thing. And this is Sanika Shakur, man. And like I said, those who are offended, fuck you. You should be offended because I'm coming and we all coming. So stand on that. We out. 
Hey, what's up? It's Sanjeev Shakur. Y'all know what it is? Been gone for a minute. Got it back in gear, back on my regiment, like Stigman would say. Back on my regiment, back on my grind. Back on my weight training, back on my grind. You know, the whole thing. Uh, last time we left off, we were talking about uh, new, uh, new African street orgs and revolutionary nationalism. And that's going to be part two today. Uh, basically, the thing is, you know, in the interim, between the time I, I, I dropped that last video and this one, I got a book from one of the comrades who's been a uh, prisoner since 71. BLA comrade, Black Panther Party member, Catapult of Philadelphia, named Maroon, Russell Schultz. Check him out, y'all. Check out Russell Schultz. His name is Maroon. M-A-R-R-M-A-R-O-O-N. The book is called Maroon the Implacable. And it's, it's ironic because what I was talking about was revolutionaries reaching back and dealing with street elements, dealing with street organizations, dealing with cats who already got the courage, sisters and brothers who are already out there. I got a sister, uh, one of my comrades, a uh, little homegirl named uh, Anastasia. And uh, the sister's so hard. She's so open. She's so, she's so witty. You know, you got to just love her spirit. And you know we got sisters like that in every hood. And so them kind of sisters right there that's, that's just with it, got that spirit. Them the kind of sisters that we want to bring it to the fold, you know, bring it to our organizations, you know, the August 3rd Collective, uh, Malcolm X Grassroots Movement, you know, Jericho Movement, NAPO, New African Scouts. We want to get some sisters like that because they already got that fire. And then the sisters is going to actually ultimately influence the brothers, believe it or not. You know, and I don't want to be vulgar with it, but there is a such thing as pussy power. And, and the sisters got to use that. And so the thing is, and I don't mean that vulgarly or materialistically, I don't mean to, to, to misuse their bodies. I'm just saying, sisters got influence. It's the matriarchal thing. And that's what the comrade Maroon is talking about in his book. But he's also talking about that some of the failures of the old black liberation movement was that uh, comrades in the movement failed to reach back. And, and, and scoop up the street elements. And as a consequence, the street elements went rock. Went rock. And uh, same thing I was talking about in my last piece, that uh, we got to understand that, like uh, uh, the comrade Yaki uh, Owusu, uh, Atiba Shana, said uh, in his piece, so let's gang up on oppression, came out in Crossroads, 1994, uh, 90, uh, 92, excuse me. The comrade said something to the effect, I'm going to have to paraphrase here, off the top of the dome, uh, the comrade said something about uh, how we can't allow the state, local, state, or federal elements, our historical enemies, to define who our friends and enemies are, especially amongst our own. What they try to do is divide the youth from the elders, the youth from the, the youth who are in the street organizations from students, students from uh, workers and so on and so forth, and they got all these these things they call wedge politics, and like a wedge of a pie, they push them in and they open it up, they create a wedge. Well, well, yeah, they're students, but they ain't bankers, or they ain't, or they 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 we students and we get the education and they street studs, you know, and they try to create wedge politics and they do that very very uh, successfully. We got to be uh, conscious of that. With revolutionaries too. Revolutionaries like uh, you know cats in uh, coming up through my bloodline, my stream, you know, you know, part of the stream I was swimming in when I was uh, a criminal. Uh, we would we would become conscientized in prison, and then we would begin to abhor, you know, uh, detest, dislike everything about that whole criminal uh, uh, element we came from because we felt that. Having been a part of that, we know the actual destruction. So we, we tend to turn our back on that as if we only can go one way. But the fact of the matter is, is when we come into the movement, we inevitably come in with parts of our new self and our old. That's a part of reality. So revolutionaries, we got to, because we are, as ourselves, a higher extension of banging. You know, and let's keep it 100. We, we ain't lost our fire. We still beast. We still do what we do. At the same time, we don't do things against the working class. We don't do, do things against students. We don't do things against elders. You know, if, if another combatant confronts you, you know, what? Man, 
It is what it is. At the same time, that, that's a war, a civil war within a smaller subculture of our whole culture. You know, that whole Kiway on Kiway, Damu on Damu, Damu on Kiway, Kiway on Damu. That's that's this big within our uh, our culture. Our culture is this big. And so the Kiway and Damu confrontation, the civil war that we got going on over here is this small. Yet out here are students, civilians, workers, elders, leaders, intellectuals. You feel me? And so this is going to have to impact this. And at just as now, this is violently impacting this. And to the extent to which class you belong to, it depends on how you feel about this. You know, because the higher you tend to get up in the petty bourgeoisie of New Africa, they tend to look down on us because they rub shoulders more closely with those who hold us in bondage. And let us not think that we're not in bondage because none of us have chains on, at least none of us who aren't in the shoe. And speaking of the shoe, July 8th, it's cracking off again, the hunger strike at Pelican Bay. You know, I'm going to be participating, my comrades are participating in the August 3rd collective, show solidarity with the comrades in Pelican Bay, all the shoe prisoners, prisoners who are held uh, in isolation, I'm telling you, I've been there. I did like 19 and a half years in the hole at Pelican Bay. So, uh, you know, I know I understand the, the situation. Those people I, I rub shoulders with, friends and enemies, you know, but I got to support them because they're prisoners and they're prisoners of our enemy. The enemy of our enemy is our friend. Understand that. The enemy of our enemy is our friend. And friends... Well, we may be not, not going to the security aspect of that. However, back to this new African uh, of street organizations and nationalism and revolutionary nationalism. This is what we're talking about. Now, the thing is this. In regards to that small thing that's cracking over here in this part of our culture, which is it's a subculture of our culture, just like everything else is a subculture of our culture, we have to carry on our lives. We have to still confront enemies of our kind, the enemies of humankind, which are and is the American government and its ruling class. So there's contradictions inside contradictions inside contradictions. And that's what dialectical materialism teaches us, that it's a, it's a non-stop continuum. There is no beginning and there is no end in the contradictions that are going to pile up, expand, extend to the point where they can't stretch no more, pop and become something new. Now, whether that new becomes productive or that new becomes destructive, it's up to those who can pounce on that contradiction and ride it to its ultimate pop. And that's what revolutionary needs to do. As cadres, those of us in these organizations, shout out to all the organizations, shout out to all the comrades, sisters and brothers in every group. We ain't on no set trip. Man, it's all of us, man, you know? We all going the same way. Everybody got going to have to get into their little tributary. That's what people's war is. Be to Wild War too. Is that there's a river, and each and, each, and the river itself is but a tributary of a of a lake. And so each vein of each tributary of each water lake is trying to find its way to where the ocean to be replenished. And so that's what people's war is. The new Black Panther Party gonna do it like this. The New African People's Organization gonna do it like that. The Black Riders gonna do it like this. The you know FTP gonna do it like this. Sisters for New African Determination gonna do it like this. Every group, Malcolm X Grassroots Movement, go you know what I mean. But we all going the same way to that ultimate replenishing of ourselves. Get back to what independence, independence. And so let us as cadres of these revolutionary organizations and members, former members or whatever of these street organizations who've risen through the ranks and became to the point where cats will listen, let us utilize our time, our effort, our strength, our mind, our wisdom to connect with these sisters and brothers, have them connect with us, we connect with other classes within the new African nation, and like Jalil Mutakin of the Black Liberation Army said, uh, then we will be able to create new African fronts for the liberation of the new African nation. This is Sanyika Shakur, and that's it, man. I'm out, and uh, catch y'all next week. I'll be I'll be on point. Love y'all. Shout out to those who support us. Fuck those who don't.
Straight up. Free land. 